where Billy has somehow made it out of the warehouse and gotten in his car and driven and found a payphone and immediately calls the cops. But when he does this, he gets put in the upside down. Now, Billy doesn't realize it's the upside down, but he's obviously very confused and he sees a large group of people walking towards him. He starts yelling at them, what do you want? But as they get closer, their leader is Billy. In a series of flashbacks, you come to find out that Billy was... Um, engulfed by the shadow monster demigorgon type, much like Will in season two. We'll get back to him in a second, but a lot of this episode is focused on the mall. Talking in the mall, outside the mall, around the mall, everything about the mall. Eleven is waiting for Mike to come over, but he never does. And when she calls him up and asks him what's up, he makes up a terrible excuse. He's obviously lying, and she knows this. Mike still has the fear of God in him from Hopper in the previous episode, so he doesn't really know how to handle this situation. And neither does Eleven who heads over to Max's house to get some boy advice. Where Max tells her, he's lying, he's a piece of shit, he keeps treating you like shit, you need to wake him up or dump his ass. She reveals that she's dumped Lucas five times already. After this little pep talk, they head to the mall, where Eleven has never been before. I did make an error in the previous episode, she wasn't at the movie, so she's never been to the mall, she's never been clothes shopping, and Max says, hey, you need to go and find something for you, not for Hopper, not for Mike, but just for you. Unbeknownst to them, Lucas, Will, and Mike are also at the mall, but they're trying to find a present that Mike can buy Eleven as like an I'm sorry. This trip ends up being unsuccessful, as Mike only has like $3, but as they're all leaving the mall... They end up getting caught by Max and Eleven. Eleven confronts Mike, who is handling this whole situation very awkwardly again and continues to lie about his Nana. To which Eleven responds that, you lie and I dump your ass. And then she storms on the bus with Max, leaving Mike in complete shock and disarray. And poor Will, by the way, because all this kid wants to do is play Dungeons and Dragons. But his timing is obviously terrible. Now, unbeknownst to Max and Eleven and Will and Mike and Lucas, Dustin is also at the mall. Having felt ditched by his friends the previous day, he goes to see his latest friend, Steve Harrington. And Steve is pumped to see Dustin. It's kind of adorable. As they share some ice cream together, they talk about how they're spending each other's summers, and then Dustin says he needs some help with a secret mission. He reveals that he's intercepted a secret Russian message and he needs help decoding it. And just a reminder, this isn't like the heart of the 80s where like Red Army and whole Red Scare factor. So they're trying to keep this hush hush. They don't do a good job of though because Dustin is loud as hell. So Steve and Dustin head into the back of the ice cream place and start trying to decode this message. While they're doing this, the other worker at the place, a girl named Robin, who's always giving Steve a hard time, She says that she can help decode this message because she speaks four languages. Now, it's worth noting she does not speak Russian, but usually when you learn one language, it helps learn two and learn three and all that. So so with the help of Robin, they all start trying to decode this message as Steve is pushed to the front of the store to actually work. Now, we'll get back to the decoding situation in a minute. I want to talk about Nancy real quick, who is taking it upon herself to follow up on this lead that she got the previous night regarding the diseased rats. She makes up a poor excuse for her boss that she has to leave. She grabs Jonathan, and they head over to the woman's house who made the call. The woman takes him down to the basement, and she says, I bought this huge bag of fertilizer, and you have rats, little teeth marks around, and they've been eating the fertilizer. And, you know, I think they have rabies, and I think the town needs to know about this. And while she's telling the story, you hear a clamoring in the background. She says, oh, yeah, I caught one of them. And sure enough, there's a rat in a cage. Shout out to Billy Corgan who is just thrashing about going nuts. Nancy heads upstairs to follow up on some of the leads. She calls the supply company where they got the fertilizer. She calls an exterminator. And while she's doing that, Jonathan is taking pictures of the rat. But all of a sudden, it just kind of heals over, and it looks like it's convulsing. Nancy runs downstairs and says, Jonathan, I got to leave. We got to go. And as they leave, the rat blows up. But the remnants of the rat end up becoming something that slithers out of the cage And it looks a lot like a slime version of Dart. Now, after the whole Eleven and Mike debacle, Hopper ends up heading to Joyce's store to kind of have a mini celebration. And in the process, he asks her out on a date. He says it's not a date. It's clearly a date. As he's leaving the store, he trips over some magnets. And Joyce ends up noticing these because she had magnets fall off of her fridge in the previous episode. She's pretty curious as to why magnets aren't sticking to metal objects. So she heads to the one person that she knows would know the answer the science teacher. The science teacher ends up explaining to her that, look, it might just be a fluke. You might be looking at patterns that aren't even there. And the fact is, you would need a 
million dollar object to throw the magnetic field off of its kilter because your house and the store's house are at a pretty big distance. But in the process of finding out what's going on with the magnets, she ends up standing up Hopper. And Hopper's had a little bit of a rough day after such a great start for him with the whole 11 situation. He gets called to City Hall where there are protests for the mayor's job regarding the mall and it essentially killing the downtown area of Hawkins. He enters the meeting with the mayor saying, I'm not dispersing this mob. They're executing their constitutional right. But the mayor's kind of a scumbag and says, yeah, they didn't get a permit, so get rid of them. Hopper throws his two cents in saying, look, if it's not for nothing, I don't think this is a smart with your whole re-election campaign. And the mayor brings up that it's a few days away from July 4th, and he's planning on throwing this town the biggest bash they've ever seen, and that's all that the voters are going to care about. So Hopper has to reluctantly get rid of the mob that he didn't want to get rid of in the first place, and then he gets stood up for dinner. But let's finally get back to the decoding. With the help of Robin, Dustin and Steve have completely decoded the message and it's mostly gibberish but it's a code obviously they're not going to come right out and say we're dropping the nukes as they're trying to figure out what exactly the message means they pass a carousel in the mall and steve harrington goes quick quick give me a quarter he puts the quarter in the carousel and he ends up hearing the song that's played with the carousel and says listen to the music the music from the carousel is the same music you can hear on the russian tape and steve says i don't think this was coming from russia I think it was coming from here in Hawkins. And then finally, there is Billy, who has somehow made it back to the pool, but is obviously not acting like himself. Mrs. Wheeler comes up and apologizes to him for, you know, ditching him. And he just turns around and says, just leave me alone. When he finally makes it to his lifeguard stand, he ends up burning up, like literally blistering up. So he hops off and staggers back to the showers. But you can see that the demigorgon is growing in him a lot like it was growing in Will in the previous season. The female lifeguard comes to check on him, but he ends up choking her out, bringing her to the abandoned steel mill, and basically sacrificing her to the whatever the hell has become of all these dead rats. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please consider subscribing to the channel. If you do not see the next video up in one of the end screens, not to worry, it'll be up in the next couple days. But the most important thing is that you like and subscribe and all that good stuff.